What is up, Dirt to Dust Nation? It's time for another episode, and it's an episode that we've been talking about for a week or two. We've been planning it. We talked about it. Um, this is the Mob Moab wrap-up. Uh, we are going to be having Jeremy Purick from Rock Crawler Suspension, and really the the birth father. He is the biological father of Mob Moab, uh, a great event that we just recently did and have been doing for a couple of years, but this was the first year uh, that we did it like this. So we're going to talk to him, talk about Mob Moab, talk about what we did, um, why, you know, what, how did it become a thing? What did we do while we were out there? And maybe, maybe we'll get out of them. Maybe, maybe what it's going to be. Maybe, maybe we'll talk about maybe some next year stuff. Maybe there's already some events planned or something like that. So obviously it's a special episode uh, as far as my illustrious co-host is concerned, because he redesigned his film studio oh, yeah. and put a casting couch in there <laughs> just for this episode, just for this episode. So, uh, Caleb, I know, unfortunately, you do not. You were not able to join us in Mob Moab this year, and we were super no. sad about that. Uh, but you definitely had some other things going on in your life. <laughs> That's kind of a busy May for me. That uh, might have been a little more important than Wheeling and Moab, even yeah. though I, I don't necessarily subscribe to that. I mean, you know what? You want to get married, you get married on your own time, okay? All right, let's just... <laughs> Just remember that next time. Yeah. All right, that's all I'm asking. Oh, I mean, hopefully this is a, um, a one and done time. <laughs> not getting married you, again. You hope. But. It better be. It better be. Because <laughs> you're not going to interfere with Mob Moab again. No, no. I'll but, be uh, yeah, we are going to sure. talk to Jeremy. We're going to talk to Jeremy about Mob Moab, where where it came from, what it was this year, um, as well as try to talk to him about. Maybe 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 work out him a little bit about next year. But yeah, looking forward to bringing that episode to you guys. So without further ado, let's jump into Mob Moab. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to, to Dust. Us. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. All right, and welcome back. You guys, like Doug said, we do have a very special guest today. And it is none other than Mr. Jeremy Purick from Rock Crawler. Jeremy, how are you doing, man? Good, buddy. Good, good. Thanks for having me on. It's, uh, you know, definitely nice to be summertime and hanging out. Absolutely. We definitely appreciate your time being here with us today. Um, this is something I've actually been bugging Doug quite a bit about <laughs> ever since the <laughs> end of end of Mob. Actually, even before Mob was over, I was texting Doug. I was like, we have to do a recap episode for Mob Moab. Uh, we talk about Rock Crawler all the time on the show. Uh, so we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Uh, but we definitely want to talk about Mob Moab today. So we're going to dive right into this. Um, first of all, uh, what what is Mob Moab? Um, mob Moab is just something, honestly, I think Doug and a bunch of us came up with it in like 2020 when the world was shut down, uh, Moab actually opened back up, uh, May of 2020 for the general public. And we were all just so stir crazy from sitting around doing absolutely nothing that we're all like, Hey, we're just going wheeling to have fun and, and wreck wheel. And let's just, let's just hit up Moab. It just opened up and, you know, it's, it's kind of taken a, sl a, a small life of its own at this point in time. You know, not that Moab is going to be the destination all the time, but, uh, it, you know, just a fun event for people of, you know, all, you know, all reaches of the U.S. to come out and just go wheel and enjoy what we do uh, on a different setting. And for, you know, retail stores like you guys have or other manufacturers just to come out and hang out with people and not be doing a general or a you know, standard event, you know, one of these shows and events like Jeep Beach or any of those where you're trying to kind of push product, but also try to have a good time. This is just about simply having a good time. Yeah, I remember a couple of years. I remember that year because everybody was COVID and like every day it seemed like we were getting another announcement of some sports league canceling their season. Something was shutting down and then we all got the notice. Everybody was waiting for Moab um 
and then we got that notice. It was pretty late. It wasn't. It was like it wasn't very long until EJS was supposed to happen. Everybody already had their rigs together. You know, plans were made. I know in a lot of cases, you know, houses and hotels have been rented and and paid for, and then you know, well, you know, EJS was just like, eh, we're not going to do it. And everybody was already kind of ready. And then nothing. Yeah, G Beach followed and suit. I, I mean, I think we had KO, KOH yeah. that year, and then it was crickets. And that was it. Um, that was it. You know, and then Sapphire called me from Zach's, and she said, hey, Moab's opening back up Memorial Day. Could you get some people together to come out? You know, the town could use some support. So off we all went. Just, hey, let's go wheeling, man. We, we haven't done anything for months, so let's hit it. And it was small for those first couple of years. We were only, what, 14, 15 rigs that first year. And it wasn't much different uh, in 2020. And then we did it again in 2021. One. Yeah, we did it twice. Yeah. Yep. And and it wasn't big. It was very, very small. Not like it was this no, year. No, no. And uh, we won't talk about the numbers. Um, it was just, it was good size. Uh, you know, but in 20 and 21, we didn't open it to the public either. You know, it wasn't a, hey, we're going to go do this thing. This was just a group of friends in the industry saying, let's go wheel and everything's still shut down. You know, let's go enjoy ourselves and, and have some fun because there's really nothing else to do all year. So, you know, and supporting the town of Moab right now is, is pretty critical with everything they're battling um, with the politics and, and stuff like that in, in the town and outside of town. So, you know, to to go there and support the business owners that need our support helps show a little bit of, you know, cause and effect for the town. Um, because if they close it all down and people stop going, well, your Jeepers, your Corvette guys, the Harley guys and all the, the Bronco guys and all these other people that go there to support the town. Um, you know, if they don't go because the land closures or whatever, that town's going to go broke. Yeah. Very quickly. Yeah, absolutely. And despite, <clears throat> so you gotta figure out some way to get out there and get involved. Yeah. And despite what, um, what the, the political environments going on uh the side-by-side -side world and the granola people are not keeping that town afloat uh definitely the offer community is is doing a lot for that town every single year no and they've really put a lot of restrictions on side-by-sides in that town now uh because of the, the noise of them and everything else going up and down the road and like you said you know the, the mountain bikers the climbers yeah they're going to tent by the riverside they're not going to be typically staying in the, the resorts or doing anything near what we did and then going and buying the dinners and lunches at the nice restaurants that are there to support us when we're there as well. So it, it's definitely a catch catch 22. And, you know, we all try to support each other and we've been going there for 22 years now. So we, we've, we know a lot of the business owners there and, you know, it, it's big to show those guys some support. Yeah, I know it definitely is. And I know they, uh, they look at that as well. Uh, every time that I've been in Moab, either with you guys or at EJS or something, it's it's usually w open arms and welcome welcoming everybody in. So it goes to show that, uh, you know, building that relationship over 22 years is definitely worth something. And hopefully that continues to go that way because I would hate to see even more land closure happen. No, uh, I think there's a, there's some really good things happening. Like Charlene Bowers lives there now. Mm -hmm. You know, she's going to be a little bit younger lifeblood into like red rock and be able to help out on different levels, I think. So we'll see what happens with Easter Jeep Safari and, and some of the other events that are, that are taking place in Moab and, and what comes of it over the next couple of years for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, since 2020, when the world was pretty much shut down and you only had a couple rigs, um, I know you said you don't want to get into numbers, so that's totally fine. But how has the format and how has the event grown since then? <laughs> I don't even want to give you a multiplier over the first year because then you get the number. Um, no, yeah. it, it, obviously this year was a tremendous turnout, more than we thought would have mm -hmm. actually been possible. I mean, we had, you know... It, not too many people know how many people register for Easter Jeep. So probably about one sixth, the number of Jeeps that registered for all of Easter Jeep Safari, you know, that number was what showed up in Moab this year. And it was, it was significant. I mean, you guys brought a big crew from the Southeast, um, you know, and there were people I've never met before, never, never even thought about meeting that just said, you know, from being on either your social walls or, Revolution or RCV or any of the other companies, you know, Artec, Motobilt, Savvy, you know, those companies that put the event out there, people just wanted to come out and go wheeling. And it, it was definitely a, a very fun and relaxed time. 
Um, you know, you guys obviously, Doug, you, you saved my ass on Pritchett because, well, Gerald <laughs> left me and uh, I ended up running the whole thing to spot. But I mean, you you, you guys just stepping in to help out and spot and help out like the first part of the group. I mean, that, that definitely helped a tremendous amount because I was booked by the end of that day. Oh, I believe that, it. Was, that was a day. That was a Doug, day. Doug, on your side, being at the first one and being at the most recent one, how has how has things changed from, I guess, the outlaw branding perspective as well as you just going out to go wheel? I mean, it was a, it's a totally different event now. I mean, it's an event now. Before, I think it's it's different stuff, same name. Um, you know, there's always been, especially the last couple of years, I know we were wheeling out at EJS last year. And I remember very, very distinctively JP saying, we're not doing this next year. Because it was like the third time we'd gotten snowed on. It was just, you know, EJS, it just happened that way where it was pretty early and the weather was really cold and we got snowed on. And last year I had 4699 out there and it was cold and it was just, you know, <laughs> the, the desire to want to wheel out there when it was a little warmer. Um, that was really strong. So, you know, to be able to bring back that event in, in the timing that that jeremy did um i think was it was it was great timing for weather it was great timing for people to be able to make it out there um so i think as far as a wheeling event it was amazing um but it's it's 180 degrees of what it started as so it's definitely evolved into something else now from just let's just bring the families out there chill out around a fire at night and go wheel some stuff i think that was kind of the grassroots of how it started and then it was like well we really like this Let's let other people enjoy it this yeah, way too, because sure. of how much we liked it. And I think that's what, it, I think that's what they, everybody I talked to loved it. So I think that was a major success in that way. Yeah, Good. Well, speaking of how everything went and how the success was, I'd love to hear it. Cause again, I wasn't there. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will be there. I will be there next year with an LJ in tow. Believe me. Um, uh, so walk me through kind of the, the, the day-to-day format here. Let's start with, with day one. Um, how did things go? What were your thoughts? How did the organization happen? Talk to me about that. Day one is in Friday, right? Friday. Yeah. So yeah. that would have been Pritchett behind the rocks and fins and things. Yeah. You know, I mean, Doug, if you want to take the lead, you can take the lead or, you know. Yeah. I mean, it was like you said, it was Pritchett uh, for the hard group. So every day was broken up into, oh, we're going to do this for a hard ride, this for a medium ride, and this for an easy ride. And that Friday, both Jeremy and I were both on Pritchett that day on the hard ride. That was the first time that was the first time the four by had hit any trail. That thing was just, had just been built. Fresh. It had stickers put on it. <laughs> yeah. It got a retorque on Thursday night. I think I did, a, I did a very quick and I mean, very quick hell's revenge, you know, shakedown run, um, which really isn't that much of a shakedown run. I mean, we went out, we did hell's gate on Thursday. We brought it back out the short route and that was it. Like it, I didn't even blow all of the E charge. Like, I was doing obstacles in golf cart mode. So I really didn't have much of a break in. We, you know, we gave it a retorque Thursday night and sent it out to Pritchett. Um, like I said, neither one of us was on the behind the rocks run and we weren't, and there was another easy run. I think it was Finn's, yeah, it was, Finn's. was the easy run on Friday. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Pritchett was, um, we had a, a pretty decent sized group, not the smallest group by any means. Also not the biggest group I've ever been out there with. Um, but like Jeremy said, it was people that we I'd never met most of these people hadn't thought about meeting most of these people. It was just people that saw the stuff on social media and was like, I'm going to go out there with those guys and wheel. And I think a lot of that was a lot of the Pritchett group was we're, we've never done Pritchett before. We've seen it. We've heard about it. We've seen it on YouTube, Facebook, whatever. And I think it'd be really cool to wheel it. And Hey, these guys are offering to take us. So we're yeah. going to, we're just going to go with these guys. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think a few and of them got up a being rude awakening pretty quick. Oh, I believe very that. rude, <laughs> a very rude awakening. Cause let me tell y'all, Pritchett is not what you see on YouTube, no. all right? It is a legit trail. It is it has definitely changed a bit, especially over the last few years. Um, what started as, as Jeremy said, Gerald Lee kind of like, peace out. Yeah. <laughs> he was going to help you, you know, from, from Jeremy riding in my back seat, basically. We're at the front, and we basically split up, took the crew in half. Um, I kind of took the first half up through, through obstacles. As Jeremy would finish up the back, he'd come up to me. And then I would kind of take off and take the front group. And that's, we kind of leapfrogged like that most of the day. It actually worked out pretty well. Um, it wasn't bad. It was a long day. There was a lot of winching, um, a lot of multiple attempts, a lot of that. Cause a lot of people hadn't been 
on anything like that before, I think. Um, but we, you know, everybody got everybody, most everybody got there. I think one person broke something and had to turn around and go back. I think they broke opinion. Or yeah, something right on, back right cast. on Axel Hill. I mean, and, and it sucks for yeah. people that, you know, you don't know their driving style, or if you get to Axel Hill and you're trying to explain to them, hey, do you know how to cover the brakes when you're driving? And they say no. <laughs> you know, you just can't put them up the normal line. You have to put mm-hmm. them up the most conservative line, which isn't the easiest line, right? But you know, it's the least line that they are likely to, you know, roll over on. So you put them over there and then, you know, yeah, when you got like 43s on a stock Dana 44, something's going to give when it hops, you know, it, it, it's not, yeah. you know, it, it is what it is. You, you know, it, when everybody go, gets in there and you got a bunch of good drivers and everybody knows their rigs really well. Yeah. You can, you can take them up the normal lines and scoot through the trail pretty reasonably, but you know, in order to not make people flip over, uh, Doug. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, we talked about that last did. week. <laughs> you know, you, you you put them on a line that's going to be the best for them overall. And yeah, if you blow a ring and pinion, well, Axel Hill is the best place to do it because it's pretty easy to get out from there. You know, then yeah, obviously there was a couple other ring and pinions and some axle shafts and stuff, but nothing nothing to write home about other than. You know, we'll, 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 I'm sure we'll get to that one, but, uh, you know, it was, it was a good day. It was not crazy long. I mean, it was, I think we were in there for eight or 10 hours with that number of vehicles, which isn't, I think that was, yeah, it wasn't, you know, God awful. We got out during daylight. So as long as I'm not coming out of dark, Mm -hmm. I think everybody's pretty happy. You know, uh, it it is a pretty tough trail, you know, especially for a lot of people that have, like Doug said, have never wheeled there before It, it it's challenging. And, Moab's a very different driving style than the East Coast, than you know, than Arizona, than than a, a bunch of other areas that these people were all coming in from. So it, it takes a hot minute to get used to that kind of driving style. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, and you said it, and that was <clears throat> what you said we were going to kind of we were going to get to that. We're, gonna, we're getting into um, it now because <laughs> it's been going around the whole. We covered it last yeah. week in the spotter episode because it was an example of you know how spotting is mm-hmm. important, and you had a rig with a driver who had never done the obstacle before, had never done that that before, along with a spotter who had never, who had also never been on that obstacle yep. before. Um, and had never, I think he'd been on Pritchett, but I don't think he'd made it that far last year or something like that. I don't think he'd ever done. Who was spotting? I don't think he'd ever, um, Josh from Charlotte. Okay, yep, he didn't get that far last year. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he broke. So, you know, and he came up to me right before, right before Jesse hit that obstacle, and he says, I th- "I've got this. I know exactly. I've been, I've been watching." I was like, "All right, cool." Go. Watch I'm all the YouTube videos. I mean, yeah, <laughs> watch all. The, yeah, well, it wasn't. You know, he'd been watching me because at that point, I had already spotted up most of my group. There was only like three vehicles left in that front group. Um, I had spotted everybody else. Mine was left to go, and there was like two more back parked with me. Um, but I knew that I knew because of my axle setup, I was just going to do the dance and walk over and and go, but I'd already spot everybody else had already gotten up. Um, we'd sent like two or three right up the middle and everybody else had just kind of done the, you know, done the dance. So he had been watching that and had been up there standing with me for most of that time, looking at it and felt like he had a pretty good handle on it. And like we talked about last week, it was just that one time where he thought typical East coast, you'd want to turn it uphill. So, and again, I don't know if it was him saying, turn it uphill. I was, I couldn't hear any of that. Now, the only thing I, I don't heard know was if he said, to me, and I didn't know what to me direction was based on who was standing where. And yeah. then you just watch the slow roll and it, you know. It, That's what I heard. So I think he, I think it was just a combination of, I definitely understand wanting to turn uphill there because it feels super weird. Um, so I think it was just a combination of driver not knowing, hey, don't turn right. Yeah. Like no matter what right. you do, don't turn passenger. And then the spotter. You know, he saw something there and he thought he wanted it a different way. And then, you know, perfect storm and over she yeah. went. Um, I knew it was going over. You can see it in the video because I'm like 20 feet to the yeah. right. And I see it go over and I just kind of start to walk over. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. As soon as he made that turn, you could you could see <laughs> the suspension done. unload. And I was like, oh, here it comes. You, you see it. Yep. it just yep. goes over. You're done. That's well, why the Bronco so, didn't go for but, a ride in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I get that. And I get that. But, you know, lessons learned. I mean, that's a thing. 
Um, I guarantee you, nobody will spot that turning passenger uphill in that group no. ever again. Mm-mm. All it uh, takes is one time to learn that. Won't that turn. No, and, and won't we used to do it right there, again. right? We would wiggle the wheel, so you'd wiggle uphill, you wiggle that you're just not moving, just to get it the, the nose to slide down to back the into drop. the crack. Yep. Yep. But you know, Jesse yep. didn't have enough steering. You know, so when I spotted him up through there, I was like, okay, I, I realized his steering was trouble. So I'm like, all right, just pin it this way, and I let the nose wash down on its own. And then just mm-hmm. scooted him up the the slide, which is, you know, that that's just the way it goes. You know, you, mm-hmm. I mean, you got to assess the vehicles as well. You know, like the first thing we did when we came in down that first drop, because that's starting to get big again. It used to be really yep. like blown out and easy. You know, I, I literally spotted everybody coming down to figure out, OK, how are these guys reacting to this? Who do I really need to keep an eye on coming in here? You know, that's what took me so long to get to Chewy to begin with you know, was like, okay, I got to kind of assess all these people. We don't know, like you guys, I was fine with, you know, and, and a bunch of the other guys, but you know, there was a probably 30, 40 faces in there. We had, we had no experience with working with on the trails at all. Yeah. Wow. Yep. That's, yep. Yep. that's a lot of people. <laughs> we're not going to mention. Well, we were spotting people through yep. sections that haven't been spotted right. through before. Like they weren't obstacles before. This is true. Yeah. So it, it, was, it the, was definitely a good day though. Yeah, but at the end of the day, oh, it's absolutely a good day. I mean, that's just yeah, Bridget. At the end of the day, pretty much everybody drove out. You know, no one had a, a major catastrophic failure. Uh, no one had to leave their vehicle in overnight. Then um, that's a good day. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, Bridget, that's a good day. Not this year. Yeah, on Bridget, not that's this, a good yeah, day. That was a good year. Everybody, everybody made it out under their own. So power we had, this year, had Bridget sure. fins and things, and you said behind the rocks day one. Yep. Cool. Behind the rocks of, as well. There was, you know, nobody, no, no major breaks yeah, on those. I'd, those those I'd groups be extremely went off surprised if anyone broke well. either one of those. Yeah. Uh, well, dude, see. the number of people on fins and things, it would took them like six or eight hours to get through it. Yeah. <laughs> and they did the whole trail. Oh, the whole man. trail. I don't think it's ever taken me that long yep. to get through fins, even at night. Uh, for no, both, you can do it eight minutes sessions. on a razor. <laughs> yeah, you, get, you get the right side by side out there, you're yeah. gone. Yeah, I think the longest it's taken me at fins at night to do both sections um somewhere around maybe two and a half, three hours. But Oh, by the way, for those watching, there is a speed limit sign on the first rock that you, there is a speed limit in there. <laughs> Just so you know, <laughs> it's, it's 10 is, miles an hour, but is it, you know. is it a speed limit or is it a speed suggestion? No, it's definitely a it's speed limit that. sign. <laughs> I found out the hard way. Oh man. All right. So going from day one to day two, what did day two look like? Uh, we went and did upper hell Dorado. And we Ooh. were gonna piggy we were gonna piggyback Upper Haldorado with Coyote Canyon because they're all out of area BFE or at least on the access road to BFE. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm trying to remember what everybody else did. I think geez, I can't remember. I took the metal masher okay. group. And we took that was a, and then that was a very we large actually group. added we split up the novice group. We did seven mile yep. and we did um Canes Creek. Cane Creek. Just because okay. the yep. novice group was physically larger than we thought it was going to be uh the people that wanted to go on those trails so we kind of broke it up a little bit so it was a little bit more manageable um they all had great great rides you know upper i think we started with like eight rigs one broke going in uh broke a leaf spring on the way on the entrance so you know and then mike from rev kit got into the entrance and parked it he's like nope i don't want to nope i'm not no i'm good so, it, you know, but it was, it was, it's a great trail. I mean, it's super, it's super dug out right now. Mm-hmm. Like to get a vehicle through the squeeze is, is something else. Uh, you know, you're, you're dragging cage windshield frame. It doesn't matter if you're in a TJ LJ or what have you, even a side by side, you know, they, they dragged all the way through. So, you know, it's, it's definitely become a little bit tighter than it was, you know, the year before when I did it with the JLL, even though I did, drag the windshield frame in the cage. I mean, I, I was expecting it, but, uh, you know, great group of guys, all very well-built vehicles, you know, that went in there. I mean, the leaf spring braking was just a fluke thing. It, it, it had fatigued enough where it just left the chat right at the beginning. So, yeah. you know, um, and obviously Doug was on, you were on what again? Metal masher. I took the, uh, the metal masher group. Yep. And most of those people that went there, I think, kind of took the scenic route, right? They didn't do a lot of the obstacles, you know, no Widowmaker. No, and I blame, I blame Pritchett for that. There was a <laughs> lot of that group that I took was with us in the front group of Pritchett. So they had already been kind of behind me that day, and I'd met a bunch of them and was starting to get to know a, a, several of them because I, I hadn't met most of them. 
So they came back to Metal Masher, and I told them at the beginning, you know, we met out. I drove everybody out from that hotel we met at. I said, all right, we're going to go out to the Gemini Bridges parking lot. We're going to have our driver's meeting there. You know, just us, our thing. Everybody can air down or whatever. So I called them at the beginning. You know, we went over the obstacles and what's available and whatnot. I said, look, there's some in here. I have no problem getting out and spotting everybody up them. Um, you know, you guys just let me know how, how party you want to be. And you could tell that some of them were mentally affected. <laughs> they were, they had some emotional damage from little, Bridget. Little frazzled there. Nobody wanted anything to do with that first wall. Um, nobody wanted anything to do with it. Like it was, I was like, man, really? Nobody, um, nobody wanted anything to do with rock chucker. Really? Dang. They wanted nothing to do with it. And not one taker. Did I have on Widowmaker? Not a single I can one. understand Widowmaker, um, but Rock Chucker. I mean, like a good LJ. Nobody LJ can wanted get that easily. None of it. A good stretch two yep, door. Nobody wanted none I mean, of it. Oh, no, there, there were um, plenty of vehicles that could have walked it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. In that group, there were tons of them. I mean, remember the dude in the, the Gladiator on the 43s, the one that did um, potato yep. salad on the last day, too? I'm trying to remember the yep. gentleman's name. Good dude. But his wife was like, after Pritchett, no, we're doing seven mile. Nope. <laughs> no, we're good. They, we're um, good. Yeah, I get it. So that the one that he's talking about, Caleb, is the one that I mentioned last mm. week was the guy that I came yeah. up on. I came up on him at Axel Hill, and he's sitting there at the bottom of Axel Hill looking up like, what have I got myself into? And I talked to him for a minute. It's like, look, you just got to do this and then turn the wheel right, and then you're going to do yeah. this. And he listened, and he one-shotted the thing. But that's the guy who got out of that gladiator, like, visibly shaking in a good way, but visibly yeah, shaking. And yeah. he took no yeah. more hard yeah. runs the rest no, of the I, week. I can understand that, that for was, sure. He was like, no. There was Pritchett caused some emotional damage with some people. <laughs> someone on needed some little needed and therapy it caused after them Pritchett. To, um, <laughs> yeah. It it lowered the party yeah. quotient a little bit for the next day. And then even after upper, like I asked that, that group of guys, I'm like, okay, you guys ready to go to Coyote? They're like, nope, nope, we're done. Nope. We're good. <laughs> we're good. We're good. I'm like, because so, that's the last hardest trail here, other than yeah. Black Flag, which none of yep. us are getting into. Yeah. So you know, so it did, was. It, did so y'all I end killed. up going to Coyote Canyon or no? No, nope. They they Robert was cool <laughs> enough at BFE to let the guys kind of go wreck wheel for the rest of the day in there. So mm-hmm. they just went and hit some hit some trails and played around on their own and. You know, and then the rest of us came back into town and, you know, met up with the rest of the group at the hotel and just hung out for a while. See, now I've got to give Adam some shit because he was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for Coyote. Like, we're going to get this group together. I'm going to wheel Coyote. And I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Till, till he went through upper. Yeah. I'm like, are you, re- are you ready for yeah, Coyote? Ready He's like, this? Uh, I don't, I don't uh, know about this. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's probably a good idea today. Yeah. Yeah. I caught him in the hotel parking lot. Saw his uh, windshield frame in his driver cage, and <laughs> yeah. it had seen some BFE. Yeah, yeah. But it's no. a great trail. I mean, yep. it's it's something to say. Yeah, you've he laughed done it off. It. He loved it. You know, uh, one of these days we got to get a group of rigs on Metal Masher and mm-hmm. be like, look, there are no bypasses. You are. Yeah, we are right. going to Widowmaker. We are going here. If you aren't in this party mode, don't don't come along. Don't come. You know, and and. and Hopefully, Easter Jeep Safari next year, with it, with it being late, the weather's going to be good. We can go f- hit full party mode on Metal Masher and, and have a good time. Yeah. Caleb, is your 100%. LJ ready? 100%. It's it's getting very close. There's a, a solid weekend of work that I've got to do to it, and it's really just finishing up small things. Um, brake lines, I'm doing a, a little hoon handle for the brakes okay. uh, so I can hydraulically control the rear. Um buttoning up some frame welds and shock reservoir mounts and Dude, way ahead that of me. is that is pretty much it I say, it's not um, terrible no no that's other not terrible at all. that i think one uh no i'm sorry the front axle I, I still need to install gears in the locker in that one uh other than that it's together i got the front end lowered substantially we redid the nice. mounts on everything um, Good. the rear sits great. Um, so yeah, it's just putting it all back together and then I've got to get some corner armor on it and, uh, or just leave it choppy either one, whatever works nice. best. But, uh, I'm hoping to have it wheeling, hopefully maybe in August, maybe going to Windrock and doing a shakedown run on it, but, uh, Very cool. she'll be ready soon. She'll be ready to party. And I'm, I'm excited for that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the stretched LJs definitely showed their merit in, you know, oh, a lot of these it. trails oh, yeah. where you're it. like, Damn, yeah. that is the perfect wheelbase here. No matter where we go, what mm-hmm. we do, that that's mm-hmm. that is it. Yeah, and I'm sitting at like Every right time. at one eleven and a half, one twelve, and perfect. I dropped down. I Beautiful. got rid of the forty threes from uh, <clears throat> y'all's advice. <laughs> there you uh, got I got rid of the forty threes and uh, I grabbed a yeah. set of Mickey forty twos, 
Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to put those on instead and not have an 18 inch wide tire. So I'm hoping, hoping to be out with you guys, nice. do metal master, do, I would love to do upper hell Dorado. I would love to get into this so they can see exactly what it's capable of. I mean, we can, we can I'm get in there. I'll, I'll have a rig ready to party by next year. So <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you <laughs> know, that, that, that thing, my little TJ is going to get some, get some love. Oh, I'm so excited there to see that go. thing. Oh yeah, man, no. I'm ready for it. So no, day three. So that would be uh Sunday. What did you guys get into on Sunday? Who even remembers? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, after day see. one and day two, we were spent. I know I took yeah, the ball oh, out. Man. So super spent. What did I do? You were on Moab Rim. You did Moab Rim. Yeah, we did. We went to we went because I went to Poison yep, Spider. Yep. And we had a couple of people yep. have some pucker factors on Moab Rim, like you read about too on Z Turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've heard those stories. I, I love Moab Rim. That's that's one of my favorite trails. Um, I try to hit it every time I'm up there. Uh, but yeah, Z Turn will will shake you. Um, if you yeah. don't like heights or you're a little bit squeamish or you're not super comfortable with off camber stuff, it will. It'll, it'll get you a little bit, but I mean, it, it feels perfectly safe. Like when you realize that you're like all, all four tires are planted, you just feel off. Not a Bronco. They're off. not. You're oh. sadly mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. So let's, that's, uh, that's not how they go through there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you got to tell me how you got the Bronco through there then. Cause I'm, I'm I mean, used to I, it in Jeep suspension. Hopes and dreams. Yeah. On the way up, <laughs> it wasn't that bad. I mean, you know, Gerald was standing there right there. So he kind of just made sure, because I can't see the tires on that thing. I'm like, all I see is a hood. And, uh, you know, just put it right on the line on the way up. I don't even think I lifted a tire on the way up. But on the way down, that tire was probably seven or eight feet in the air coming off the ledge. And I was like, well, I got three tires in the air we're, or on the ground. We're doing we're doing pretty good for a Bronco today. So, um, you know, I had never actually been all the way to the petroglyphs and the overlook before, though. So that was, that was something new for us. We, we had John with his YJ up there and he, he repelled off the, the overlook with a winch. I mean, nice. <laughs> it was, yeah, <laughs> we, we, we had some fun up there. It was, it was pretty cool to see those things. Um, you know, and, and I didn't know, I don't even know if you know that they were up there. Cause usually I went to the top, turned back around, like, okay, the obstacles are done other than Sandhill. Let's just turn around and go back out. But this time we went all the way up to the overlook and stuff from the other side of town. It was it was pretty cool to get that far and go see, you know, the old Indian artwork on the walls and, and other things that were up there. The, the canyons are pretty amazing in there too. And so, you know, just, just something different. I haven't experienced in Moab yet. Yeah. No, that's something I, I have never been up to the petroglyphs. I've heard of them. Um, but the groups I've been on with have never gone that far. So next time I go out there, I want to do that. I want to bring the new camera set up um, and, and spend some time just getting some pictures and images. Cause I think that's something that, I don't know, 99% of the population in the world won't ever see in their lifetime. Yeah. Um, and so being able to document that and oh, just see sure. that myself, mm -hmm. oh, I love it. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah. Cause we were, we were right across the river from you. I was hoping we would get down in time. Well, we were originally supposed to do, I think it was poison spider. And then we changed it. We were going to try triple mm -hmm. threat, which is poison spider to golden crack to gold bar rim. Um, but it was more of a, let's see how this group does. And again, the continuation of Pritchett Canyon's emotional damage <laughs> was evident even on day three, because it was just, everybody was cool. They were doing the stuff, but you could tell it was a slower, more methodical. Like I was having to spot stuff that we normally wouldn't. Um, it was just, it was a lot of do it for me type of spotting at that point. Like I could clearly tell that they could have done it, but they were just like, tell me mm -hmm. where to go. Um, you know, so I basically had to spot an entire group up the waterfall on poison spider spotted the entire group through the V notch. Um, so you were just, you know, they just weren't, they weren't super um, willing to just wheel the obstacles themselves. And I think that was a lot of that. Again, that was a lot from Pritchett. They were like, that, that's just, I think that trail is going to be burning some people's. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, or, or maybe the people time. that thought they should have been on Pritchett day one should have kind of worked their way into this a little bit. Uh, right. You know, because Pritchett for the mo the hardcore guys was the easiest one we had, you know, mm -hmm. and then it was Pritchett, Upper, Coyote, you know, here we go. Uh, we're we're going to we're going to see what you're all about and, and full party mode. But, <laughs> um, you know, I don't know why some people feel like, hey, I should go try Pritchett Canyon. It's the hardest trail in Moab for my first run in Moab. It's, you know, learning the Moab bump, learning how to cover the brakes, learning how to drive out there. Don't steer if you're not moving, you know, all of the, 
quintessentials of being able to wheel successfully in Moab and keep your rig alive all week, you know, is not what you want to be learning on Pritchett Canyon. No, no, not at all. Well, it's the just it's the classic. You don't know what you don't mm-hmm. know. Those are things that they don't even know that they need to know, and they just think, "Oh, I've got some experienced dudes going out here. They'll get me through it." And they just go. Um, which you know, I don't. I'm not a fan of the mentality, but that's probably what it was. And they don't know about. They didn't even know that two pedaling was a thing. I can't tell you how many people I asked through the week, "Do you know how to two pedal?" And they look at me like, mm-hmm. what? "What is that?" <laughs> like that doesn't make any yeah. sense. And then you have to teach them how to do it. And then you kind of see that click. So I think it was just a more of a. You don't know what you don't know. They know now. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. They know now. You know, and that's yeah. one of the things. And they won't be making that like mistake Like the Easter again. Jeep Safari, we try to cover on the 101 day with everybody. You know, mm-hmm. when we're out there, we right. do a 101 day, and then we do a regular day of, of wheeling and, you know, get people out there so we can teach them that before we bring them into even, you know, Metal Masher or something like that. If we're going to go into these other obstacles, you know, how to cover the brakes, how to you know, what you call two pedal, I call it covering the brakes, um, you know, and safeguarding against some of the nannies that are built into the jails and the JTs when you're wheeling, because, you know, bad things happen, you know, when you don't do those things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's actually one of the most valuable skills you can learn to do early on. Um, even on our side of the country, wheeling in the Southeast, um, is two pedaling, covering the brakes. That's something I learned very early. And I was just like, I had no clue what it was, but I remember seeing a video. I want to say it was Dennis at Terraflex was talking about it. And I was like, wait, that makes sense. Um, so I tried it and then realized like, this is a much better way to do things than gas break gas. It's a game break, changer gas. when you learn it. Uh, right. Total game changer. Yeah. So and yeah. just for those, those listening, you know, by covering the brakes or two pedaling, you know, what you are actually doing is preloading the entire powertrain to be going in one direction. So you're not shock loading your gears. You're not shock Mm -hmm. loading your drive shafts, not shock loading your axle shafts. Everything is loaded in a given condition. So it, all the slop and all those components is taken out, which just helps, you know, save parts and components to, to stretch the week. If you've got a weak, weak link in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So moving on from there, what did the uh, what did the last day look like for you guys? A lot less attended. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but by, 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 yeah, I mean, people no, were coming no, no. and going, you know, on the weekend, but you know, and then some people, which was which was what I was hoping to see, is they'd split their off and go do their own trails, you know, mm-hmm. and the, and the groups became a lot more manageable. Um, you know, we we took a, a group of a lot of novice people over to, and I. I'm going to find this guy's name here in a second. I think it was Bart, um, you know, on Hell's Revenge, because that's, to me, that is the iconic, hey, this is Moab, scenery, yeah, trails. Absolutely. You know, it's not the toughest obstacles, but it can give you a good pucker factor when you're mm-hmm. on the on the ledges and on the fissures and stuff like that. That, uh, you know, we took a, and, and these were people I hadn't wheeled with all week because I was in the Bronco, and, uh, so I didn't get to do any, of what I considered the novice runs. Um, mm-hmm. and, and even that was pretty interesting. You know, you got people out there at open, open stock vehicles and stuff. And, you know, they were panicking when they get to the ledges or, you know, off to a face that they have to drive off of. And they have no idea if the ground is there or not, you know, or how they're going to find the ground. If it's upside down, if they need a parachute, uh, what's going on. It was, it was, it was, it was a really good day. We had a couple guys get into the, you know, Mickey's. Nobody got into devils. You know, I think uh, Mike Kaplan from RevKit kind of put a fear of God in, in, in a lot of people when it came to that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, um, and then I I believe the gentleman's name was Bart, but in that gladiator on the 43s, you know, after that, we walked mm-hmm. him over to potato salad and just walked him up quick, uh, just trying to teach him how to pick lines and did a little bit of one-on-one stuff with him on some harder mm-hmm. obstacles because, you know, a gladiator on 43s is pretty overbuilt for Hell's Revenge. Yeah. So, you know, it, all bit, in all, it was a good a day uh, up there, too. I mean, again, that's one of the trails. That's where I like to do my one-on-one sessions with people because that trail has a little bit of everything in Moab yeah. to offer. You know, everybody did, everybody wanted to did Hell's Gate. Uh, we had a couple guys do Escalator and then the new, like they call it like mini Escalator on the way out and stuff. Mm-hmm. We, you know, took the Bronco through all of it, too, and just you know, see what that thing's like right now. Cause we, we did some modifications with it. We work with rock jock on a rear sway bar, 
for that triangulator four link and stuff. So I wanted to take it in the same lines that I took the red one the year before a Bronco Safari. So I could see what the improvement was and, and kind of make sure that vehicle is a hundred percent dialed because we're, we're developing a huge community in the Bronco world too. I think we had oh, yeah. 11 or 12 Broncos show up at, at, there were at several. this event. Yeah, it was a lot. Wow. You know, mm-hmm. some, awesome. some were on Quinn's several. portals and, you know, some had our pro X stuff with the triangulated four lane conversion and, um, some of the PB and J arms. And it, there was quite a few Broncos there and they, you know, they, they want to enjoy it too, man. It's, you know, and once you learn to wheel a Bronco, other than the fact that you can't see hardly anything, I mean, maybe it's something to do with my height too. I don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, but that hood is massive. When that yeah. thing goes vertical, you're, you're yeah. just looking at a hood. Yeah. Uh, I see my Nitto sticker on the hood and that's, that's about it. About I'm like, it. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I should put a front camera on this one, but, um, yeah. you know, th- they can they can do some things that people didn't think they can do once you oh, get them set it. up the right way. I believe it. Um, speaking of new rigs, though, Doug, you had the four by e out. Um, how did the four by e? Well, a how did it uh, compare to other vehicles you've driven through Moab, and b how did it do, especially like on Hells and some of these other places that you went. I think overall it did good. Um, it's it's different. Mm-hmm. Um, that thing in four low in the different modes and, and we did some weird stuff, you know, trying out E mode and mm-hmm. E save and hybrid mode and seeing what did what, and what kind of acted this way. Um, it, it really in four low did not like, uh, automatic. Yeah. So I ended up wheeling that thing 90% of the week in manual yeah. mode, manually shifting it. Um, you know, the first day it was all over the place. I was like, man, this thing sucks. And then it got better and better and better as I got better and better at controlling mm-hmm. it and shift points and all that. Obstacle wise, it did fine. I mean, it, it's not Reaper, right? It's not long arms, forties, and coilovers, um, you know. But it it did go out and do a and provided a very good example of just it's on thirty eights, it's on a mid arm kit. There's nothing special about that kit. That is an off the shelf. Anybody can buy it from your off road shop. Mm-hmm. You find a rock crawler dealer, you can buy this kit. Um, super easy there. It's not coilovers yet. It's regular shocks. It's regular arms, track bars. It's the kit. We always talk about being a quote unquote complete kit. We threw 38s on it. We beefed up the axles. We geared it and we went and we went and threw some smoke at Moab. And other than a couple of spots in Pritchett, mainly not because of the Jeep, mainly because I didn't want to break the thing on day one and then not be able to wheel. Um, the rest of the week, it did great. Um, day four for us was the pickle, which is super short trail, um, but it's just, couple of obstacles, one, two, three, four. Um, it did great. We played in the sand. It did great. We went out and ran around some of the overland roads out there north of Gemini Bridges. It did great. Um, it did. So it did Hell's Revenge. Then it did Pritchett. It did Poison Spider. It did Golden Spike. Um, you know, so it did uh, everything that I needed to do to say, all right, well, these are the upgrades. You know, there's a couple of things coming home. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this, this, right. and this. But again, none of it is stuff that's not – totally off the shelf yeah. stuff you know it's gonna be it needs psc out there especially with so much yeah. grip and having aired down 38s uh especially if you're locked up um you you know you don't want to you don't want to you know obviously you don't want to steer when you're not moving out there you don't want to break some stuff but you almost you want to a little bit especially at low speed and low sp- and 38s air down don't want to mm-hmm. do that on stock steering so that's one upgrade but that's really the only performance one that i noticed of like yeah, I'm going to do this. Everything else performed pretty well. Luckily, nobody damaged none of that. I did, you know, scrape a couple of the pretty blue rock rings. That's unfortunate. Poor you. Did, did you, you know, do uh, Hell, Hell's Gate in all electric mode, or did you, did you drive it in a hybrid mode or gas mode? So I did. Hell's Gate was in electric. Okay. Hell's Gate was in electric, and I went a little bit. I cut a little bit drivers. I came up so that I would lift. There was a crap load of people up on the rocks watching. So I decided to kind of take the little bit different line where you bring the passenger front tire up like 10 yeah, feet in yep. the air. Um, Cause people are up there video and I'm like, you know what? It's Do marketing it. <laughs> time. So we did that and got the big crowd oohs yeah. and ahs. Um, and we did that a lot, like, especially on hell's revenge on Thursday night, there was a lot of people hanging out. So we would come up to an obstacle, pop it into. Um, so I did find out you cannot put it in E mode when you wheel it in manual. So if you're going to do an obstacle, you have to throw it over to, to mm-hmm. drive. And then you can put it in electric yeah. mode. You cannot 
put it in electric mode while it's in manual, which I wasn't a huge fan of. Um, maybe, maybe we can tune that out of it at some point, but, um, so when you're on stuff like that, it's fine. You're on hell's gate, you know, you're, you're at one speed the whole way up yeah. pretty much, you know, it's just crawl all the way up. So you could do that. But if you're on a bump obstacle or something like that, where unfortunately you really can't put it in E mode, um, because it's going to try and shift on you in the middle of like a chewy or something like that, it's going to try and upshift on you and you're just going to lose it all. Yeah. So all of that type of stuff, I wheeled it in manual and then stuff like, you know, hell's gate and some of the, you know, V notch on poison spider. We did that in all electric mode. Um, the wall going out golden spike, the big, uh, what do they call that? The, um, launch pad. Yeah. We did that up and down launch pad, uh, in all electric mode. And then we went up sky bridge skyway and back down in all electric mode. And then obviously hell's game. Nice. So it did, it did really good. It was really cool to be that quiet yeah. and people would, it, notice it's pretty it. weird, right? Your stuff. They knew it. I was like, this just doesn't feel like I should do it, but it's super torquey. It's pretty smooth. Um, but I, I could definitely feel the power. I could definitely feel the power in hybrid mode, but I could also feel the weight. Yeah. I could absolutely yeah, feel how they, heavy they're heavy. Is. They're heavy girls. Yeah. They, they are. Yeah. It, she's heavy. But I think for what we wanted to kind of see, you, you, you buy a four by E, you build it, and you send it straight to Moab for its first trip. I think it did good. There's a lot of ways I can improve driving it. I think there's also some ways that I can improve its ability to be driven. And then, you know, we'll do it again. We'll go back out. Did, I think we've got did a trip, you gear that one too or Moab, no? A couple of Windrock trips planned. It's geared to 488, okay. um, which I thought with the torque would be enough. It's not. Yeah. Um, it's just too heavy. Driving it on highway speed, it's too heavy. Yeah. So it's going to need at least 513s. I'm actually considered. That's the thing with the JL. Anytime you think you've got it, go one, go yeah. one deeper. Yeah. And then probably another one. So th- my problem with that is because of the weight, I'm probably going to end up throwing like Curry 60s on it. Just because of the weight yeah. and then wanting to go 538s, my concern is the opinion yeah. on that. Um, and that'll end up being a weak spot. So I think I think we will probably throw Curry 60s on it, um, and we will have those built in at 538, I think, will be the sweet spot nice. for that one. Nice. Yeah. And then you and I have already talked. I think we're going to put coilovers on it, PSC. And then I think it's good to go for, you know. I mean, I- We've always said I was going to keep it for this year and next year, and I think it'll be good. I, I would love to be able to wheel all of Hell's Revenge in complete silence in electric mode. That would be cool. Yeah. I mean, that would be pretty dope if they could. I'll try it next year at EJS. I, 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 I don't know if they're going to get the range out of it. You know what I mean? Especially we'll wheeling it and using it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so th- that, that'd that be interesting. But, like, that kit that you talk about saying the complete kit, that Adventure X came about because of the 4XE. You know, we did one when they first came out and we built that kit and went off road, you know, into like, you know, just fire roads and stuff. And it was just complete silence, not a, not a noise, nothing Mm -hmm. except for the tires rolling over the ground. And you're just like, this is, this, this is pretty wild, you know, and to be able to do all of hell's revenge and complete silence would be unbelievable. Awesome. I've been trying to talk Brittany into letting me do a little bit more on her four by E. But she's she's holding fast. To, she doesn't want to do anything else. I did bumpers, uh, just a leveling kit, 35, some sliders, very, very simple stuff, some Baja Designs lights. Um, but I'm hoping that once she rides in the LJ, she'll realize, like, how capable her Jeep is, even with 35s on it. And then let me go have some fun. Give it up, Caleb. She's not going to do it. <laughs> I mean, Stop. does she let we'll you plug it in and unplug it? Because that's about it. That's about all I, you're going to get to do. That's oh, about, I mean, yeah. we take the doors off. We yeah. do. I mean everything so it's just it's getting her to go off-road with it she's yeah. not letting you mod it I anymore caleb just but i mean she, honestly right now in 35 it's, it's ready for hell's revenge it is yeah oh and it would probably absolutely. last yeah. longer than doug's on 38 so <laughs> it would so, <laughs> probably you know yep, that yeah. there is that it, it yeah. does have a shot at it yep. but yeah. you know i think it'd be cool as shit to get like a group of 4xes you know and just all go 100% silent through Hell's Revenge. God, that'd be cool. Okay, that's it. That's All what right. we're doing next year. We're doing it. Well, speaking, we're doing it. I will. We're gonna we're gonna start the Facebook let's group. Let's do it. It's happening right now. EJS <laughs> but um, speaking of future that's events, though, uh, JP, I'm gonna try to put you on the spot here a little bit. What okay. um what's the vision for future events for Mob or you know just future events altogether with you guys? No, I mean you know we I I personally feel that this is this is a different way forward uh, than the conventional shows and events where it's, you know, everybody's together, you know, just 
for us, uh, you know, Doug, Doug also went on the Ruba dice, um, a run we did. I think that yep. was 21. We did that one. I can't remember where we went out, ran Rubicon and four dice. Uh, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. I think back right. to back. And, you know, so we're going to continue to do this. Uh, some will be closed events invite only, you know, just, just because of the trails, you can't put that mass number of people on. Right. Uh, some will be, you know, open to the public uh, again. Um, you know, the, the goal is to just move it around the country too, not just keep going to the same place. I mean, we'll obviously be revisiting Moab more often, you know, just because it is an iconic place and mm -hmm. it does have a, a special place in our heart for, for what we do. But, you know, to, to be able to go to, let's say we're going to Texas, uh, you know, Wolf Caves and K2 are back to back to each other. Yep. You can have a great wheeling weekend there. Uh, and meet people, you know, um, we, we want to talk to the park owners and see what we can do for the, the consumers and stuff that those areas don't have the amenities that Moab has, mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's a little bit different of a situation, but th there's great wheeling all over this country that people seem to forget about, you know, they always get focused on, you know, sand hollow or Moab or the hammers. I mean, 99.9% .9 of the people are not putting their vehicle into the hammers trails. Right. You know, that's just, that's your LJ. That's not a 4XE, you know, right. unless you really want to smash it up. There's, <laughs> there, there's things, yeah. you know, that are very, very friendly. You know, I mean, I saw the guys out at Vernal this weekend. I mean, I'm like, Vernal's awesome. I mean, you know, Farmington, Las Cruces, there's mm -hmm. tons and tons of places. The, the Colorado Rocky trails are amazing. You know, there's, there's tons and tons of places that people can go to experience the off-road life that isn't a major town where they have to spend every penny in their pocket, you know, and that was part of the deal with Ma, the, Mo, Ma Moab this year was we got a great deal for hotel rates. We got 50% off for all the people coming. We wanted to make it affordable because one of the things people was were really complaining about Easter Jeep Safari is when all the manufacturers are coming, it just jacks up the rates. They know they yeah. have, yeah. they have you, you know, and they can charge whatever they want. Cause you have to come. Yeah. Um, yep. And yep. there, there is no really, you have to come. It's, Hey, when can you get out? When, when do you want to go see things? And, and you know, people can form their own small groups and go out there and do exactly what we did just by having all the companies like you guys and everybody else going, it just gave more people more confidence to go and oh, by the way, yeah, here's a 50%. The, you know, um, Perrin was great to work with at Spring Hill and, and uh, Fairfield, you know, by hooking us up with those events and then also segregating off a s small section of the pool area so people could come and hang out and, you know, we could all just kind of just sit and talk and people could meet people and, you know, go over whatever they wanted to go over uh, in a different level than, oh, I got to go see this vendor at this spot today, you yeah. know, because that's just... It gets old, man, and and I we're agree. in the we're in the like the the long tooth era of the current Wrangler and Gladiator. You know, who knows when we're going to see the new ones? Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're a ways off. So now it's kind of status quo now for yeah. You know, the next six, eight, whatever the number of years is till we see yeah. a new platform. Yeah. Um, when people really truly be excited again. Yeah. So you know, doing things that are just different and outside the norm. Uh, you know, kind of gets everybody excited to go do something. Yeah, for sure. And that's something I'm, no, I'm looking forward to Doug. I know you're looking forward to, uh, cannot wait to see what we do in the future, what Brock Crawler does in the future. Um, definitely excited to get my LJ out to some places finally. Right. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and Doug, I know you're on a time crunch, so that is all I have. I think that's a very good stopping point. We might have uh, JP on for another episode here in the future. Uh, but if you want to go ahead and close this out and do your thing, man. Yeah, for sure. So we've, um, I think we talked about it a little bit last week. Um, we've got, um, we've got our event coming up. I'm not, I'll probably release official dates here. Maybe in the next episode, we might be able to release it in the mailbag on mm -hmm. Friday. Uh, the Outlaw Off Road Trail Days event at Windrock in September. Uh, we got a private ride. I think we're going to do kind of like what JP said. We're going to do private rides. We're going to do public rides. We got a private ride come up in August there, but we're going to do a public ride, much like Mob was done similar to that at Windrock in September for Outlaw Off-Road Trail Days. Um, and then, of course, we'll be waiting for the announcement for where we're going to be going next year with Mob, blank, blank, blank. Who knows? 
it'll be out there. We know, and we, uh, we also know Outlaw the, is going to be a part of it, so it'll be fun. But of course, uh, of course. you know, th- there'll definitely be one that's an, an invite only type situation, just because of the trails yep. that you know we've already discussed it, and then the other one we'll we'll put some dates out there and and, and get to get out there and meet meet new people and you know try some different trails that we we don't know. Yep. So everybody, stay tuned for that for sure. That information will be forthcoming. Um, other than that, we've still got the um, – today ends the pre-sale for the spotter T-shirt at theoutlawoffroad.com slash merch. Uh, that is – today is the last day of the pre-sale for listeners only. Uh, we will then open that up to the public. And once again, those pre-orders will ship out by the end of June. We are now into the middle of June, and those will all go out by the end of June for the first pre-order, uh, obviously – some preference given to listeners and watchers of this podcast and to the listeners and watchers of this podcast. Thank you all once again for joining us. We appreciate you guys each and every week tuning in, finding us wherever you get your podcast, finding us on YouTube, uh, YouTube, Google, uh, Spotify, Apple, oh. all the places, <laughs> all the stores everywhere. We appreciate each and one, every one of you for joining us as always. Uh, look forward to every Wednesday for the release of our episodes, as well as Friday for our mailbag, where we dive into your questions, your comments, your concern, even a little bit of haterade every once in a while. We get involved in it because why not? Uh, those always drop on Friday. Uh, yeah, that's where we'll leave it. Again, thank you, everyone, for tuning in and watching wherever you may be, whenever you may be watching and however you may be watching. Thank you all. And until the next episode, we will see you on the trails. You've been listening to the Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road, the premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.